Hello there, my name is Linda, also known as Torta Jala around the internet, and I love journaling and all things stationary. So today we are going to do a little bit of a journal and uh, planner chat because it is the end of the year and as we head into 2024, I definitely have a lot of conflicting thoughts on my mind when it comes to what my lineup will be. So. If you're into stationery or the planner journal community, you probably already know that it is a full-on frenzy kind of uh, time of the year when we go from end of year to the new year because everyone is breaking into their new planners and journals and notebooks for the year. In fact, some people might have already started using their new journals because they can't help themselves or it starts like in the December time frame so they can already start using them. And I know, I know that the beginning of the year is just an arbitrary time, right? Like we transition from one year to the next, but you can obviously make a change at any time of the year. Um, and if you're like a planner hopper, you probably know what I mean. It doesn't have to be the end of the year for you to like make a change or start something new. There are obviously no rules to how or when you use your planners and journals. But because the end of the year and the new year, it's just such a big event. It's such a milestone in our culture. Um, I mean, all around the world. It's just a natural time of the year where there's transition, right? So you can start afresh, have a new beginning, and ring in the new year with like new dreams, new aspirations, and of course, a new planner, new journals. So maybe it's just all like the marketing hype, but that's how it feels. And it is really nice to have that kind of like cut off and like start fresh kind of thing um just like how it's easier sometimes like mentally to just be like end of the week or end of the month or start of the new year right so I usually do an update of what I'm using on a monthly basis that's what these like journal chats are and it's a way to check in with you guys but also a personal check-in to see how things are going and just like chit chat about journaling and planners and stationery and all that kind of stuff because I don't have anyone in my real life that like likes this kind of thing so it's like me in my head all the time so making videos and talking about it I think it really does help me out and again it is a personal check-in also to see how things are going and if I need to pivot and make changes you know to my quote-unquote system um, sometimes like when you talk things out it's somehow just like gives you clarity right so if you've watched my previous videos um, by the way there is a playlist I created for all of these journal chats specifically if you're interested go check that out um, but you will know that I use a three-year Midori diary and it's one of those like multi-year journals so each page um, is a day of the year and over the course of multiple years you're gonna use this journal and write a few sentences for each day um, and so at the end, you're going to be able to look back over multiple years of the same day. And I like happen to have this three year version um, because I wanted to make it as easy for myself as possible. I know that Hobonichi has like a five year journal, but I thought like, wow, that's a big commitment. And when Midori had this three year, I was like, OK, that's that's approachable out of like all the options out there. So I wanted to start with the three year journal and um, I'm learning, obviously, as I'm going through and using this to be brief, like trying to get a hang of it, um, because there really is not that much space to like write stuff. Um, people usually think like journaling and things like that. It's very daunting, but honestly, you do not have that much space. So it's a very few couple of lines. Um, I really love this journal because I love the Midori paper. I use a fountain pen with no issues. And this journal itself is beautiful, like hardbound. Um, there's also a keepsake box that this like goes into. Um, but basically after many years, you're going to have like, you can have volumes of this right on your bookshelf. Um, and I'm starting with the three year journal, but um, they do have a five year. So I'm thinking that after three years making it through, then I can graduate up to the five year. And Midori also makes a 10 year version. So after the five year, I could get like the 10 year version. Um, and so it just seems like such a cool thing to have in your bookshelf in old age, right? You have like three years, the five years, the 10 years. Um, 
it's like when you're older and you have kids and grandkids and they're going to pull it out and every single page is probably going to be like sparking some cool piece of family history or some personal story. It's just amazing. Like I know it always seems that our life lives are like sort of mundane and routine and maybe they are routine, but at the same time, there's always things to reminisce about. Um, and that's why I really love documenting life and memory keeping. Um, so that is my romanticized view of um, this multi-year diary uh, that I've been keeping. I have not had issues keeping up. Um, I just write the entry every night. And even if I happen to like skip a day or two because I'm, you know, busy or forgot to do it, it's easy to catch up because again, it's a very little short blurb that you have to write up and there's not a lot of space. So it really doesn't take that much time even if you have to catch up. I actually find myself having to learn to get used to being more concise so that I'm not like wordy and running out of space. Um, second, I uh, do my memory keeping in an A5 notebook because I like the large size. Um, I need it to be able to keep like ephemera that my kids give me and cards. And it really is like a photo book for me because I come from the world of scrapbooking. I definitely did the full page scrapbooks from when my first kiddo was like a little baby like 10 years ago, but I moved away from that because I didn't like the large format and living here in Italy, it was actually really hard to find um, like scrapbooking, you know, commercial scrapbooking supplies. Most of the famous things and things that I was like following, you know, they were American brands and it was just very annoying to have to order from America to come here. Um, it was not cheap and it was not very accessible. And that's how I got more into the creative art journaling and uh, mixed media kind of stuff. Um, because you could just do whatever and it, you know, whatever supplies that you have. So memory, memory keeping for me, it's still very photo heavy as opposed to like writing. Um, so my books get really chunky because I'm tipping in so many photos. Um, I have used Hobonichi. I have used A5 like weekly inserts instead of daily. I've used um, Kimbor. Uh, this year I am in the Hobonichi Cousin and... I sort of dropped off after June because I took my kids this summer back to California to visit family for summer vacation basically because we we haven't visited because of like um, the whole COVID era and then like personal issues and things like that and it was just time to go visit. So it was a very long trip because we hadn't been back for so many years um, and I was travel journaling in my traveler's notebook inserts so I didn't see a point in like duplicating you know, photos into my cousin. So the summer months are empty. And then when I got back home, I just sort of lost the steam to keep up with it. Um, and it was also like, it felt sort of weird switching back to the A5 size. It's, it's almost like I got so used to the standard TN size when I was travel journaling. Uh, I don't know, like it really got to me. And I still had to catch up on the travel journaling. So there was like things to do there and photos to print. Um, so that's why this cousin right now, it, I mean, it's already really chunky, but it is definitely not up to date, but I will finish it off for the year, but it will probably be just very like photo heavy, heavy, like highlights and just captions as opposed to like long form writing. Um, you can see that like in the beginning of the year, I definitely had much more long form writing. And then as time goes along, it's become just more like photos and ephemera and things my kids, you know, make or give me and I want to keep them and just like captions. So um, generally, I really hate having to catch up. Like I find myself not remembering everything and it's so hard for me to go backwards in journals because I just literally like mind blank cannot remember. Um, so uh, that's how I feel right now. And that is my Hobonichi cousin. Again, I'm going to finish it off for the year. Um, but I, I don't want to um, force myself into this kind of dated book anymore, like moving forward. 
So, okay, third, I have this mole skin pocket in daily. And I'm doing like a pen only update in it where I'm literally just writing a few phrases of what productive thing did I do that day. And it started as like a very like help myself with mental health kind of thing. Um, because I had like fallen off planning and everything was just crazy. And even if an entry is just like, I survived the day and that's okay, that is enough. Um, so this pocket moleskin is very empty because the entries are very brief and short. And my thought is that I will continue using this next year, um, going it through again day by day, um, just adding a positive affirmation for every day. I feel like it's a good project to spend some time on because it's like saying something nice to yourself every day, like that. It's like, oh, mind blown. It's such a simple thing, but we don't really do that to ourselves, do we? Um, more often than not, we're saying negative things rather than positive things. So I think having this like daily habit of like, okay, put a positive affirmation there and say it to yourself, you know? So I'm going to put that in here because there's plenty of space and really I do not need to buy like a 2024 moleskin for this. It's not a planner. It's just a journal and I could just follow the days even if like quote unquote the date is wrong you know what I mean like there's one a day that's it just stick it in the book um and so that's my pocket moleskin and I still have lots of travelers notebooks and theme journals that have been in the back burner um I might have made like an entry one or two like here or there when I've had something to add in because these are um notebooks that are either for like travel like trips um or it's like my stationery um insert where I'm documenting the things that I buy or there's one that's like documenting the places we eat one documents like the music that we are into and like why um but it's not a regular thing that I touch daily um so I only bring them out when I want to journal in them so it's not consistent at all um if you're interested I will make videos definitely going through all of the many different journals that I have um I will get to them because it is fun and I like this kind of thing but again it all really just depends on my mood and what I want to document at the moment um and by the way I think that it's okay to use your supplies in that way like one day you want to journal in a particular notebook so you use that one and then another day you want to use a different notebook so you use another one I don't see anything wrong with dipping in and out of many journals for various like theme subjects or different purposes um I think it's okay um and like um I think we should you know make sure to to note or realize that like our things around us they should be tools for us and not like the other way around kind of thing so um use them as you see fit you know but I totally get that it's also very satisfying to have like a whole book that is just one year I get that like it sort of encapsulates your life in that year right it's like a personal diary or something like that um so I have my um I call it my everything journal because it's not it's not a dear diary kind of journal but it's really just a mix of everything like sometimes I'm writing down a quote um oftentimes I'm printing out like IG posts that I like that I just want to capture or I'm copying a passage out of a book or I'm journaling about some random you know musings thoughts um or it's ephemera from like everyday life that I wanted to keep it really is a big mix it's very random like very random it's not dated and sometimes I will like flip back and fill in places that are like white because like something fit in there so there's no rhyme or reason and I'm not like designing anything here or like I mean because you know when you lay out a page like you're semi like paying attention on trying to make it like you know some type of you know finished look like page but in this averaging everything journal literally sometimes I'm just like slapping stuff in like no rhyme or reason so I like having this kind of journal I think it's very freeing to have like one space that is like this with no rules no expectations doesn't need to look pretty um I encourage you to have this kind of everything journal because you just need to have that space to be like blah whatever you know I can do whatever I want um so that is my everything journal but moving forward to 2024 what am I doing? Am I doing these same things? Well, my Midori three-year diary, yes, I'm going to continue that. The pocket moleskin, I already said I was going to go in and do the daily affirmations, so that will continue. Um, but 
for my memory keeping, I did not order anything from Hoonichi this year, which is like crazy. But at the same time, there isn't the need. And I'm glad that I held back. Um, like stuff was sold out, so I couldn't even like make the order. And then I was waiting for something to come back on stop. And there was a lot of back and forth. But in the end, I didn't order anything. And I haven't ordered anything. And I realized that I didn't want that dated and like a gajillion pages because I wasn't going to use most of it. Um, so for 2024, I am using the Midori, um, the MD Diary in A5 size. And if you watch like my notebook video, you'll know that I already mentioned this because this was like the one thing that was certain. Um, basically, it's dated um, with like the months and then all the other pages are blank. So basically you can have like a monthly overview for your memory keeping for like high level things. And then all the other pages are blank so that you can put in entries as you see fit. And even if like the entire summer, I don't put anything in because I'm just doing travel journaling, it's fine. And maybe I will still have leftover pages. I'm not sure um, because oftentimes I have so many photos, like it's not one page a day. You know what I mean? Like it could be, 10 pages for like this one event. Um, so I don't know, I haven't obviously used this before. So I don't know if at the end of the year, I will have lots of leftover pages, or if I won't have enough pages because I use too many. I don't know, but I think it'll even out because if normally I can fill out my Hobonichi cousin on a daily basis, because sometimes even in my cousin, I'm putting more pictures in and it's not really in, in, um, in accordance to the actual date on the page, um, because it depends on the events and stuff, I think that this 2024 MD Diary is gonna work. And it's a beautiful, um, you know, notebook. And I've always wanted to try it, so I'm really excited to dive into this for 2024. Um, and again, I think that, um, you know, it, it's gonna be very photo-driven or like ephemera-driven for me. Um, it's rare for me to go in and just write and then put in other stuff. I always start from like, oh, I took this photo, I wanna include it. Or I have this ephemera, I wanna include it. And then I journal a little bit about it. And it's always usually about my kids or something like related to family and stuff. So memory keeping for me is very much a family thing. Um, it's something that I can show, you know, to all my family with no issues, which leads me to um, a personal diary like maybe that is something that is missing for me where I can like word vomit into and um, I have used an A6 Hobonishi before for just like straight dear diary kind of writing but I don't know I don't know if I want to uh, put the pressure on myself to do something that's daily you know so not dated and again from my video from before um, I have plenty of notebooks so really I can just grab a notebook and use that for personal um, you know diary so I don't know it's it's I don't want to pressure myself I don't want to set anything down I don't need to like add anything to my lineup until I want to you know what I mean like there's no pressure so um, I mean, I was definitely highly tempted by like the Midori Hibino um, or maybe even the A6 size MD diary because it's so pretty, but I stopped myself um, from buying anything. I'm on a no spend and I have plenty of notebooks, so I do not need any more supplies. And I'm not saying it's easy. It is a struggle to go on a no buy, okay? I have failed a fair amount of times, um, but... Um, I've also done like the shopping cart dance, you know, where you like add things, but then you don't check out and you go back and check another day and be like, hmm, hmm, and trying to like think about it. And so lately, um, I've just been successful in not actually checking out and ordering things. Um, but the impulse is still there. So I totally understand that it is not easy. It is just so fast these days to see someone using something and you get curious and suddenly you're like, looking online where you can order it and how much it is. So I really have to cut myself short and like tell myself I do not need anything, do not order anything. So on the planning front, I have been doing very simply, um, like simple daily logs. I have a monthly and daily logs. It's like 
not very functional planning, as I've said in like previous videos. I'm just at a stage where I'm like hanging on. So I'm more so logging and collecting data so that I don't forget things. Um, I am not fully organized. I feel like I don't even have quote unquote a system. Like a system implies there's like sense to things and how it flows and stuff. But I am, I, I definitely feel like I'm just surviving and in the middle of everything. So I have this Kimbor notebook where I write out my dailies. It's sort of like bullet journal style, but no actual like key or anything. It's just a list, very simple. Um, and I've been doing this for like about three months now. So it's pretty routine sometimes with my kids. We're doing like the same things or the same types of things, like sequence of things. And of course there's events and appointments and things. Um, so it's more of a log so that I don't have to rely on my memory. Um, but after this many months, I feel like I am repeating a lot of things. Um, so I don't know if I want to change things up. Like maybe I do because I don't think like, it's good to try something for a certain amount of time, but then when you realize like something is really repetitive, you don't need to keep doing it, you know? Um, I think in 2024, I really can use any notebook to do this. I actually bought a Kimbora 2024 <laughs> before um, impulsively for this purpose. And so I can do the same thing that I'm doing now in the Kimbora 2024, but I almost feel like I don't need that much space because if I'm not going to log all the runty things or have like a timed log, I might not even fill in an A6 page. So do I do a day a page or do I do like the bullet journey style where you just like put a header? Like, I don't know. Um, of course, before I started my bull bu no buy, I did buy like printable inserts as well. So um, I was thinking I wanted something portable. That's why. So I have these printable inserts from effective paper and it's meant to be like a passport tea and insert because um, I don't need to log like the super routine stuff anymore that's like very very similar all the time like if it happens every Tuesday and there's no change I really don't need to log in it too because I like got it down now so I feel like I wouldn't have that many items so I could do like a weekly um, but it's you know I don't know I haven't actually tried it so I don't know <laughs> um, but I really wanted to use my Passport TN as an everyday carry. So that's why I, ha I, I was trying this, like wanting to try this. Right now, it's, there's like a brain dump uh, task insert in here. And then I have a journaling insert. And I want to try this like weekly um, to see if it will work. Because if I don't need that much space, I'm not going to use like a giant giant it's not really giant but like a large a larger a6 notebook if i could do it in a passport you know so it's all a learning process and i'm trying so um i'm not sure yet and we'll see what happens um it's interesting because like the end of the year um i don't know why it is a happy time because you know i have kids and family and there's lots of festivities and like you know you spend lots of Christmas time with your family and holidays. Um, but it's also like a very anxious time for me as well, like end of year, new year. I don't know, I find it always a bit stressful, always a bit like anxiety inducing. Um, it's like another year passes. It often makes me um, like I'm in my head too much and I beat myself down a lot. I tend to think about all the things I didn't accomplish and it's like, oh my God, another year has passed as opposed to what I did accomplish. Like it's definitely like a mindset kind of thing. Um, my mindset needs help. <laughs> so I know a lot of things don't make like logical sense. Like I can tell you right now about it, but I can't stop myself from feeling the way that I feel. You know, like, does that make sense? Um, so I'm still working on a lot of things and trying to organize myself and get ready as much as I possibly can for 2024. And even though it's perfectly fine to change things along the way, it would be nice to start like the new year afresh with like a certain set of intentions and things like that. Um, having a whole set of new notebooks, like breaking in and all that kind of thing. It is like a very romanticized stationary life, you know, it's just, it's cool. So that's what's on my mind. 
um, in this journal slash planner chat. Um, I really appreciate you watching this video and listening in. Let me know down in the comments if you have your 2024 lineup figured out already. I would love to know. Um, I know p many people have posted videos about it. Have you decided or are you still like thinking about it like me. There are things like in motion. Um, so I really hope you have a lovely holiday season and if you enjoy using digital printables, remember I designed them. Um, I, uh, I make pattern papers, I post on my Kofi feed, you can sign up as a member for monthly downloads or just drop a one-time tip and still get access to loads of other printables that are posted on the feed already. Of course, you can also go to my website. I've been blogging for years at tortajala.com and there's lots of freebies there so you can just download stuff and play with them. Um, I really appreciate your support. Thank you again and until next, next time, bye!